What's up all my cool snakes and neonates? How's it going? I hope you're all keeping well. So today we're going to do an episode on the Domino's Boa. That's right, what an awesome and special snake. We did an episode a wee while ago, a guide to the Burmese python. It was and still is very successful. So we're going to go through all the animals we have here. Once I feel like I've got enough knowledge and enough experience with these animals to put out some sort of a care sheet on these animals or some sort of guide to these animals. So today we're going to do the Dumbrell's boars, one of my favourite species, an absolute gem of an animal is the Dummerals boar. So we're going to start off with where they come from. So the Dummerals boa comes from a little island called Madagascar, just off the coast of Africa. Right beside Africa you'll find Madagascar. That's right, it's not just a, a movie title to a kids animated movie, it is an actual place as Madagascar and that is where Roland here is from. Madagascar is a wonderful island, home to some really unique species. Some of the animals that live on Madagascar you will not find anywhere else in the world. It's a really unique ecosystem that is under threat from local population that is currently growing and expanding which is really the story everywhere else in the world. Humanity is expanding and we're running out of natural world. The Dummerals boa acrantophis dummeroli is the scientific name. Also in Madagascar, you'll get the Madagascan ground boa, which is a different species, which is acrantophis madagariensis. So these are, they're very, very similar visually, but the Dummerals boa is a little more different. Um, bit darker in coloration. Where are you going, my boy? So Acrantophis dummerli, they are an, of course, being from uh, Madagascar, that area, they are an old world boa. So they are a member of the Boaidae family, just like our common boas, our boa imperators, but their scientific names all start with boa, whereas these starts with Acrantophis. These guys come from the dry areas of Madagascar, so the savanna forests, the dry forests, not the rainforest that is commonly associated with the Madagascar. Because of all of the destruction, habitat destruction going on in Madagascar, Madagascar has now regulated the exportation of local species of animals, and fauna, anything that is natural is now regulated from Madagascar, if not banned for exportation. So because of that, here in the UK, we need an Article 10, I think it's called, certificate to own these guys. Each animal must come with an Article 10. So if you're buying a uh, uh, Dumbrell's boa, make sure you're getting one of these as well. It just means that everything's legal and everything is proper and you won't have any problems when selling them. I think it needs to be um, refreshed every sort of so often as well. I think you need to reapply for a new one every now and then but yeah what we plan on doing when we start reproducing them is getting every baby will be article 10 um certified wonderful species of boa extremely easy to keep um throughout this whole thing you guys are going to hear me sort of referencing the boas the different species of boas so we've got red tail boas here we've got common boas boa imperator boa constrictor and um, Acrantophis. So as we go through, you guys are going to hear me talking and referencing the other species of boa. That is probably because you guys have got one of the other species and you're looking to branch out your collection and add another species of boa and you're looking at the awesome and amazing Dumbrell's boa. What I always say when I'm doing these sort of care guide videos, the atmosphere in my animal room might be different to your house or your animal room, so it's a guide video for you guys. Um, so in this room here, I barely spray these guys down. I give them a spray when they're coming into shed and I just pulled this out of Roland here's enclosure. One full shed. So one spray before a full shed is a great uh, indication that the husbandry is right in that enclosure and it's a happy and healthy animal too. 
a relatively good clue to that fact. Um, so I give them like a spray literally when I see them in shed. When I see them blue, give them a spray down and that's it. I don't actually spray them any other time. Um, they have a humidity holding bedding. So when it comes to the bedding, I like to give them, usually I do a cocoa bedding and cocoa bark mix, but with the Dumbrose Boas, I tend to give them more of a cocoa bark mix solely. And that is because they're a very burrowing species. So you guys see that beautiful patterns on the back there. They're gorgeous animals. I don't know if you can maybe see it there. It's a little dark here in the reptile rich room. So you see that beautiful, gorgeous pattern on Roland's back there. They have that pattern to help blend in with the floor. They're a largely ground dwelling boa. They don't tend to climb much. I've never really seen them climbing much. I'm not saying they won't climb much, but they don't seem to climb much. They prefer to burrow into their substrate and camouflage and go invisible in their mind, in their substrate. So a nice deep cocoa bark will do these guys just fine to help them sort of burrow in and help them turn invisible and feel comfortable and happy in that enclosure. Um, as for hides and things like that, as long as they're able to burrow into their enclosure, I don't bother with big hides. They tend not to use them. Lilith, her smaller female, she has a hide and she's usually, more than likely, you'll just find her burrowed in her substrate um, around her basking area. Won't you, my big man? He doesn't have a hide at all, do you? And you're just a happy, handsome boy. Yes, you are. They are a very slow growing snake. If you're wanting a big snake quickly, this is definitely not the animal for you. And if you want a big snake quickly, no snake's the animal for you. Um, these guys are stunning when they're younger, but they do take a very long time to grow. I wanted one of these guys since I first seen them in 2009. They're not very easy to get hold of. Large part of that being that they are so slow growing Breeders keep a hold of them for so long before they start making a profit. They were never really interested in breeding these guys. So they're slow, so slow growing. They only have small litters because they have relatively large babies. They usually only have about 10 in a litter, give or take. Um, so there's not a lot of profit to the breeders that are in it for money. Um, with keeping these guys. We do have a male and female, so we really do want to start producing these awesome, amazing animals. Um, Lilith's a couple of years off. Um, so it'll be a few years, but when we do start pr producing them, you guys will know about it. But yeah, we are very excited to be working with this awesome and quite unusual species here, the Dumeril's boa. Speaking of reproducing them in babies, the babies can be quite tricky to get eating for that first year. They're certainly an interesting species when it comes to feeding. They will sometimes drop feed. You can dangle a rat in front of their face and they'll just stare at it for hours, put it down in front of them on the ground and they'll help themselves to it within minutes and uh, devour it. And then other times you'll barely get the rat in the enclosure and they'll snatch it out of your hands. So they have a very, very unpredictable feeding response with that, <laughs> look at Lilith, with that strong feeding response or that unpredictable feeding response, I would, as always, highly recommend tap training the animals with a hook like this Give them a wee stroke when they're in their enclosure so they know you're coming. Because of all the animals here, Lilith's the only one to ever have bitten me. And it was a sheer accident. It was 100% my fault. I went in. I hadn't addressed that I'd went into the enclosure. I grabbed her from behind when she hadn't seen me coming in. And she obviously thought it was a rat that came and turned around, tagged me. With the sheer strength of her, it actually she caught me on the knuckle and it bruised up. And when it comes to handling them, though, they are bomb-proof. Fantastic animals. Really great animals. Um, on par with likes of royal pythons and things like that for handling. I would say that these guys are a fantastic step up if you're wanting to go from a royal python. You want to get a larger snake, but not something that gets monstrous. Um, this is a male, so as always, they're sexually dimorphic. So the, or as usual, they're sexually dimorphic. Not always the case, but typical of boas, they're sexually dimorphic. Females get larger than the males. Um, Roland here is actually a very large version of the male. He is quite a big boy. Um, he is a huge boy, actually. So the males will typically typically get about five foot, four or five foot, and the females will get about six, seven foot. So they're not huge by any means, 
but they are still a large impressive snake and that pattern is just absolutely gorgeous it really is pretty much unmatched the pattern on them is beautiful you can get them in sort of a range of slight variations and um, you can get them in more sandy colors you get them in with pinks and almost blues up them the faces often have really nice colorations on them and um, they are really really beautiful snakes it really are just absolutely jaw-dropping the dumerals boa and um, the madagascan ground boa that i might mentioned earlier on they tend to be a bit more orange i've noticed they're a bit more of an orangey colour whereas the dumbrels are a bit sort of more chocolatey colour I think is the best way to describe it but they're beautiful they have that gorgeous sort of underbelly pattern they have that sort of faces down the side the alien faces down the sides of them they're just gorgeous I remember the first time I seen these on the internet somewhere in 2009 and immediately I was like I want one of them it took me about 10 years to get my hands on one but it was well worth it when I did um, when it comes to handling these guys, they are different. This is probably one of their main differences to your other boas and pretty much other snakes is the strength that they put in when you're handling them is unbelievable. They're just so tense all the time. I use Lilith, our female Dumbrell's boa, in sort of our zoo to you and our kids' uh, programs and things like that, uh, our school visits and stuff. But I never let the kids handle Lilith and that's simply because her comfort grip, her grip that you can see Roland doing there to make sure he's not going to fall, her comfort grip and just their general being is very tense and very strong and if you know a kid, if she comfort grips onto a child, the child wants her off and the, I can't get her off immediately, um, you know the kid could panic and all that kind of stuff, not that the snake would intentionally hurt someone but the fact that it could cause a little bit of a panic. So when we're dealing with the dumbrels, we actually don't let the kids handle the dumbrels, we let them pet the dumbrels because they are just ridiculously strong. Lilith puts way more strength into when I'm handling her than um, Hunter, our nine foot Burmese python. Um, and she's only about four foot long. She is ridiculously strong. They both are, they're very tense snakes. This is actually the most relaxed I've ever seen Roland. Normally they're like, well, there you go, I can't even straighten them out. Normally they're like ruler straight and you can't bend them and they're so rigid and it's crazy. I've never handled anything like a Dumrose boa for sheer strength and tenseness. They're an extremely strong um, boa when it comes to handling, which is just as well. They don't really get over about seven foot long because if they were a little, any bigger, they would be a sheer handful um, to handle. But they're absolutely wonderful, as you can see here. We get a nice big cuddle with our boy Roland. Let's swatch over, <laughs> swatch with swanchin. Let's swatch over, swap, I still can't say it. Let's swap over to Lilith and then uh, we'll carry this on with the female. But how wonderful is our big boy Roland here? <laughs> there we go, pretty girl. So Lilith, this is Lilith, our female. Look how gorgeous and light she is compared to our boy Roland. She's beautiful. We're gonna get some pretty babies off you, aren't we? So when it comes to housing your Dumrals boa, you want to have a deep substrate in there because like I say, they like to bury, they like to burrow down. So you want to have that deep substrate in there. Temperature wise, it's pretty much exactly the same as your red tails, your common boas. It's about 32 basking spot, cold end of about 26. They're pretty bomb proof when it comes to sort of enclosures. It's your typical sort of snake temperatures in that way. Humidity wise, the odd spray when they're coming into shed is all that they need as I've mentioned and when you're building their enclosure you want to put a lock on it because they're so strong as I just mentioned. Roland here has opened up his enclosure. You guys will see on a previous video he managed to get out and kill some spiders because he managed to open his own glass with his sheer strength and then um, got loose and just knocked some spider enclosures over and accidentally killed some spiders did our naughty boy Roland. You also want to put ventilation in there. So as well as being stronger than any other snake that I've met, they also have a strongest smell of any other snake that I've met. Well, maybe not than the false water cobras, they're very stinky. But these guys pee a lot. They like to do a number one and it smells. Roland is really bad. I don't know if it's because he's male, his is a little worse, but he also doesn't have very good ventilation in that enclosure. So when you're building their enclosures, you want to put plenty of ventilation in there to make sure that the air circulates and as clean as possible and whenever you see a pee 
pull it out as always so yeah that's pretty much the setup just the usual they don't really tend to soak if you've got the space give them something to soak in if they want to but i've never seen them soaking i just give them a large water bowl and that is enough for these guys to get a drinky isn't it you like your drinkies yes they just prefer, prefer just to hide in their substrate all day long um they're a very lazy species even by boa's standards they're quite a lazy species Sometimes you guys know I like to in the summer if it's a warm enough day I'll take all my animals out one one at a time and I'll let them down on the ground and let them soak up some of that natural UV some of that natural sunlight and um, Lilith here I'll sit on the garden chair let her wander down she'll literally either not move from my lap or get as far as my feet and curl up on my feet and just go to sleep for like an hour or two um, they are extremely lazy and easy going snakes and um, they're not the most active of snakes so if you're wanting a snake that's going to be sort of whizzing around the enclosure all day long. The Dumbrell's boa is definitely not for you. But if you want something that's gorgeous, puppy dog tame, and so easy to look after, Dumbrell's boa is definitely up there. The size of the enclosure, I would always recommend very minimum. The length of the snake should be the length of the viv and one side. Um, you really want to ideally have the length of the snake to the same as the length of the viv is ideally what you want um like i say these guys aren't terribly actives uh, actives these guys aren't terribly active the most you ever see her moving is literally when you take her out and you handle her like this and even then she's not terribly fast are you my sweetheart no so hope you guys have enjoyed this guide to the dumbrose boa amazing snakes awesome honestly i cannot recommend them highly enough for anyone potentially looking at one as long as you have the space for a good size viv up to about a six foot vivarium you guys will love this species they're wonderful animals very very cool animals to look at very unique so guys i hope you've enjoyed this dumbrell's boa special what an awesome and amazing animal really is really is aren't you yes you're a sweetheart so thank you very much for tuning in as always, like, subscribe, comment, share the channel around. You guys are doing awesome. We're almost at that thousand subscriber mark, so keep up the subscriptions, guys. Keep sharing the channel around. As always, from me, the Dumbrells, and the rest of the gang, take it easy. Peace. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done.